harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Bills, I'm reluctant to put on my headphones. Why is that, Tom? Because I think I'm... I have debonair hair. You do have Again. good hair. Can I, I'll put it on just to... Just it's to, got quite a height. It is. It's, it's a bouffant. How As, many inches would you say? Um, I think it's probably two and a half inches high. Easy. But once I put my headphones on, it's going to collapse a little bit. But can I talk you through what I did? Yeah. I washed it. Right. That's a good idea. Shampoo, conditioner. Lovely. Out of the shower. I combed it all the way back and I let it dry like that. Now, it looked terrible. No, it, no, it did when it dried. It looked terrible. It looked like Arthur Fonzarelli type vibes. But then what I did was I got some sandy kind of waxy stuff and I pushed it all forward, all forward, all forward, all back. And this is what we got. So it started back after the shower. Yeah. Then forward. Forward, aggressively forward, aggressively forward, aggressively forward, back. back. And then this is it. It's brilliant. But now what we're going to have is we're going to have a, a little step in the middle. That's all right. Don't worry about but that. This is not a podcast about debonair hair. As long as you don't bend down, you would never notice. Yeah, good point. Um, so I, I went to see you last weekend. Yeah, I remember I was there. Left some Maltesers in your fridge. Ate them yesterday. I was going to say, did you bring them? No, my son ate them. And I showed him how to do the Malteser trick. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, you go like that, anyone who's never had a Malteser. Or anyone listening, if, like that means lie down on the floor. Yeah, if, if you're just listening, I'm laying back. And then I put a Malteser on my lips and I seal my lips around it. Then I blow up <laughs> so that the Malteser is basically floating in air. Yeah, it's like a little miniature planet, like a chocolate planet. Yeah, that I'm keeping up there only through the power of my lungs. Yeah. And then I let my lungs stop so the air stops. Yeah. I open my mouth. And it goes. Yeah, but don't inhale the Malteser because you don't want a Malteser in your lung because you can get a very serious disease. Mal- a, malt lungs, it's called. A lot of people die that way. Yeah, yeah. It's like 20 or 30 people a year die from doing that. So let us know if you guys can do the Malteser trick because it's not easy. It's not easy. And if anyone can do three in a row, you've won the world record. But when I was driving here today, I was very excited. I thought, great, I get a chance to see Bill. He's going to bring me the Maltesers that I left in his fridge. At the weekend, I went over to see Billy. I brought his wife her favourite crisps. Two packets of skips. I brought Billy a bar of nougat. Some Which I ate the next morning. Some people call it nougat. That's a controversial thing. It's pink and it's white. Yeah, it's lovely nougat. Or it's nougat. got nuts in. I brought some crisps. I brought a crunchy. And then when I left, I left some Maltesers in the fridge. Oh, was that your Maltesers? Those were mine. But... What? Oh, did you think they were for Jack? I thought no. I just yeah. thought they were a gift for the family. Well, they were. They were. You were. Um, should we do a quick update as to where we're at with um, Elijah playing League of Legends? Please. League of Legends update. <laughs> Elijah Gate. So on a scale of one to uh, uh, fruit, size of fruit being a grape. Uh, no, the the, the, the tiny seeds in a strawberry being yes. bad. What was top? The top was a watermelon. Where are we at this week with Elijah playing League of Legends with us? Well, we've still not even reached the size of an apple. I think we've got worse. I've never spoken to him since he came in here yeah. that day. Week one was a, a grape slowly rotting in the sun. Mm-hmm. I think we're now at Raisin because I've, mm. I've texted Elijah a little bit since our podcast and he's kind of avoided mentioning League of Legends. We had a game last night that we had two games. How did we get on? Well, Dr. Mundo, who is one of my favourite... I'll go in the jungle with Dr. Mundo any day. Yeah, he's been a jungler for a while, Dr. Mundo. But they've made him a top laner now. Yeah. And I got destroyed. Have you him. ever played top lane before? I've never been up... I've never even went to the top lane before. And the top lane is the longest lane in League of Legends, and that's where all the big tanks and bruisers hang out. And that's where my son plays, right? Right. So you take a bunch of damage yeah. because... The lane is so long that you need to take on that damage. Yeah. Unfortunately, but you got battered. I get you? totally battered, and I didn't know what the buttons did, yeah. and I was weeping. Yeah, no, end. it was... Uh, but also, I thought you were very unlucky because you were against a Y1, or a Yone, as they call him in mm-hmm. uh, League of Legends. We call him Y1, who is not, te- he's not normally a top laner. He's usually mid lane, and he's fast and aggressive. And scary. Yeah, he can kind of, like, shapeshift with his sword and, like, you know 
dig at your guts. And who was the second person I played against? Alawi. I didn't like them at all. But do you... <laughs> yeah, this made me laugh a lot. Do you remember me saying to you, just get the tentacles. Don't get, get the her. tentacles. Because what happens with Alawi, she's kind of a... Like a Polynesian, Hawaiian type vibe. Lovely. Well, do you think she's... Is it female or male? I, think. I have no idea. We're not sure about the sex. If you could let us know about the sex of Alawi, we'd appreciate it. What she does is... She puts tentacles down around her. Not She doesn't control it. It just happens. A tentacle hits a wall. A tentacle hits a wall. If you attack a Lowie, her tentacles will hit you. But if you just attack the tentacles, they won't hit you. So what you have to do is hit the tentacles before you go after a Lowie. But what if a Lowie's there? That's all right. If a La- well, just- but she's attacking you. Well, me, to be honest. So... I would stand as far back as you can from Malawi and the tentacles and right. from a distance yeah. try and flo- throw a cleaver because you're Dr. Mono. Yeah. Throw a cleaver at the tentacles. I'm but going to have another go when I get in today. It's, it can be extremely demoralizing. Yeah, well, yeah. um, but when it's good, it's good. When you play without me, mm-hmm. do you win more games? I very seldom play with... Like, I never go on and play myself. Really? Yeah. There's a couple of times I went on just with Jack, my son. Yeah. And we played a couple of games. But pretty much, I've only ever played with you and Nigel. Right, yeah. right. I, I play much less on my own than I used to. But when I learn a new character, I try and get him to the point where I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you don't want to come on and embarrass yourself in front of all of us. Which I think is what we all did last night. Bills, one of our sponsors is Liquid IV. And you... Love Liquid IV, Dom. I've really started to love Liquid IV, Dom. They have a lot of flavours. Is the one that's at the top of your list currently? I've got a few, actually, just now. I've just started to get into strawberry. Mm. It used to be watermelon. Uh, Watermelon's my favourite. I like lemon-lime. If you want to do a swap, we could maybe do some swaps, because you have a ton of flavours, right? Lots of flavours. My wife's favourite is guava. I just love it. I think, I mean, I just feel like I'm doing myself some good. Before I do something, say for instance, I'm doing a a bike ride. I know mm. I'm going to do a long bike ride. Mm. I get a liquid IV, mm. nice watermelon. Yeah. And I drink that before I start. Yeah, I think it's probably good pre-workout and post-workout. And just to kind of knock the cobwebs off. I mean, it contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange and as much potassium as a banana. And, of course, it's going to be a lot healthier than your sugary sports drinks. No artificial flavours or preservatives, and it's got less sugar than an apple. Amazing. So grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, and you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code ONION at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using the promo code ONION at liquidiv.com. You know what I like to eat in the morning, Dom? Is it cereal? It is. It's Magic Spoon, isn't it? Magic Spoon cereal. I like Magic Spoon too because it's good, tasty, healthy cereal. Because I'm trying to get healthier and people say cereal, too much sugar, but then comes Magic Spoon, changes the game. Yeah, it's zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. And only 140 calories a serving. Listen to this, it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low carb and GMO free wow and so many nice nice flavours cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter you've done the peanut butter cocoa combination love it Dom <sighs> so tasty so go to magicspoon.com slash onion to grab a variety pack and try it today and be sure to use our promo code onion at checkout to save five dollars off your order and Magic Spoon is so confident in the product it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money No questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash onion and use the code onion to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. It's time for... I will take the ring. Um, Well, should we jump into these questions? Come on. No, no, I think we're doing a quiz first, A quiz? Well, you know what that means, Dom. What? Before a quiz, there's always a song. Oh, come on, let's sing a song. Hold on a second. Billy is just jumping to his left to get a guitar. And now he jumped back like a sprite to his right. Hold on, Tom. Now holding a guitar. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> lovely, deep, rich, treacly mahogany. 
It is a mahogany. Who makes that guitar? We're not advertising. It's but. Martin. Who don't who don't um, uh, give it into the show, but. By God, they make good guitars. They've given you the gift of music, and you know that's enough. Me. That's enough. Dom, I think you know this song now. I'm going to sing harmonies. Oh, that would be like, lovely. Uh, like Art Garfunkel. Shall we start on the third time around? Yeah, come on, let's do Here it. Here it goes. Here we go. Do you know the answers to the questions that we'll ask? Do you know the answers? Ring a ding a ding ding ding. Do you know the answers to the questions that we'll ask? Do you know the answers? Will you take the ring? I got on the quiz! Ho -ho! Can I tell you, I did a very professional thing with my What mic did you there. do there? As I did the last bit of the harmony uh -huh. on the ring, I moved it further away and then back. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah. Frank Sinatra, he was the Sinantra. king of that. Sinatra. <laughs> you know Frank Sinatra? Yeah. It was a guy who knew him. Yeah, is it what he was the king of bringing the mic away? Oh, yes. I think Adele said a really funny thing once where she said, when I'm in concert and I know I'm not going to be able to reach that high note because yeah. I've been singing for the last few months, yeah. I just give the mic over to the audience to say, sing it with me, come on, so you can save your voice. That's a good idea, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to put the guitar away. Billy is now moving to his left and almost dropped the guitar and now he's back, guys. Oh, wow, we have humans on, uh, on the TV here. Hello, Adam. And hello, hello. David. Hi, uh, How's it going, guys? Now, where, where are Adam and David from? Not only I'm, uh, geographically. I'm northeastern Pennsylvania. <gasps> Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Have you ever been? Not sure. Where is that? Mm, it's somewhere in the <laughs> United States. Okay, it's one of the states. It's one of the 54. Uh, Adam, what's Pennsylvania the most famous for? Oh, that's probably a good question. It Where is. Where I live, not famous for, but little known fact is HBO was founded in not too far from where I live. Nice good. one, Adam. And, and then... David, where are you in this world that we live in? Well, I'm Australian, but I live right down the road from Dom's old hunting grounds. I'm in Birmingham. Oh, you're ah. right, right now. Nice. From Birmingham. Yeah. Just down Lovely. the road. And where in Australia were you from before that? Brisbane. The best city in Australia, mate. Brizzy. I do like Brisbane, Brizzy. actually. Brizzy. I had a yeah. lot of fun in Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane's great. Love Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. Those are my three favourites. Yeah. Well, should we get to these questions? So you guys have got five questions for us, I think, and we've got five very hard now, should we say where Adam and David are from, not geographically, but why they are here on our quiz? Yes, we should. And I think you should do that because it slipped my mind. It fell out of my brain. Then. You don't actually know. I'll, I'll leave it to Adam and David. They'll tell us. Why are you guys on here and why do you know stuff about Tolkien? Mm, that's a good one. Well, Adam and I are the moderators of the Lord of the Rings subreddit. And that's where you guys came to join us for your amazing AMA. Mm. So we, we run the place and we sweep the floors and we keep it nice and clean. I love it. So they guys, they're from the Reddit, the subreddit, subreddit. L-O-T-R. So. And, and is that quite a healthy uh, Reddit? Is, it, is there a lot of um, chat going on there? Is it quite a positive place to be? Uh, Adam, is, you for the answer? most part, yeah. Um, I was actually, see if we were prepared, these are things that I'd have on hand, but we've got <laughs> how many subscribers? A billion! Uh, half a million? Wow! thousand. Wow! wow. Well, you could get... you tell everybody to listen to Friendship Onion, please? Yeah. I think well, we do we actually it... post every, yeah, we pin every episode that goes Good, up, so. good. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, it's time for the quiz! It's time for the quiz! What are the rules of the quiz, Bills? Questions and answers. But we're, So we're a team. We're a team. Merry team, and Pippin. Team... Team Shire. Team Shire. Lovely stuff. Do you guys have a team name? Uh, you can pick that one, Adam. Oh, oh I thought we Should were Should we just be like... Team L O T R or slash R slash L O T R. Okay. Nice. Right. Subreddit. Lord of the Rings. We're gonna ask five questions 
Adam and David are going to ask five questions, and if it goes to a tiebreaker, we have a tiebreaker situational question for you. I think we're going to do quite well here, Tom. Right. Do you guys want to start, or <laughs> shall we start? Oh, it's your show. I feel like you guys should start Adam, off, Adam, right? that is so polite. That is very that nice is of you, Adam. Lovely. Thank you very much. All right, Bill, shall I go Yeah, first? you start, Tom. Question one. <clears throat> the Misty Mountains were once inhabited by a rambunctious clan known as Durin's Folk. What are Durin's Folk most commonly known as? You have four multiple choices are here. We, are we doing multiple choices? Yeah, we are. Right, right. I think this is very easy, but we right. started them off easy. Yeah, we don't want to go too difficult. Uh, what are uh, Durin's Folk most commonly known as? A, dwarves. B, ents. C, hobbits. D, elves. What do you think, Adam? Pretty easy one? That is a pretty easy one. All right. But it's good in. a warm-up. You know? Yep. Yep. And the answer right. is? Well, probably dwarves. There's the ah! correct answer! I told you it was too easy, Dom. I All told right. you that was too we're, easy. We're lulling them into a false okay. sense of security. Go on. Give us one. Give us <laughs> one, Adam. Come on, David. I'll keep score. You go, mate. Yep. Okay, see, I thought maybe I made mine too tricky. We'll see. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> although mine were heavily book-focused. I felt oh. I had to go peak nerd, but... We've read the books. We've read the books. My heart is pumping. I, I yeah, did sure, watch the healthy. previous episodes where you said you had read the books. So we have. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Man. I knew that was in there. Go on. Um, so let's go with... In 19 Rings of Power were made by the elves in the Second Age. Correct. And Sauron took from them 16. Three of them, the three that Celebrimbor made alone that Sauron never touched, remained hidden, and in the Third Age, they're still wielded by three people. Do you know who those three people are? Billy, I think we've been. And I guess this should be worth three <laughs> points, I guess, right? <laughs> three points? Don't we're, give them three points. We're in, we'll ma three we're in ma major trouble here, Bill. Major this, this trouble. Is, this could be... <laughs> three hidden rings. John, We're John. just going to confer amongst ourselves, oh, Adam God. and David. I think I know where one is. Where is it? Well, did one... Was one up Bill the Pony's ass? No. Is that not an, an, a, a ring? That answer? wasn't a ring, no. Um, I mean... I mean, did you know there was three rings that were I, hidden? I thought we were doing Lord of the Flies questions. No, d were you reading the wrong book? Yeah, oh, yeah. This could get So I was going to say right, pig, pig, something about Piggy or Ralph. Now, So in the uh, third age, these three, uh, three rings for Elven Kings, seven for so the Dwarf so, one, nine for Mortal Men. men so, 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 dwarves. And, uh, one in a ditch covered in shit. <laughs> one in a fire. Like a fire pit. Yeah. Two up a pony's ass. No, that's, that's four, four rings I've missed. Oh, right, so there's three. Let's have a guess. Do we think one's like in the in the dwarven in Moria? No, that's not right, is it? Because we went to Moria. There wasn't a ring anywhere near it. I had a look. We I have to guess. See. Right, okay. One in the sky. Well, one of the floating. wizards has probably got one. Radagast. No, Radagast. he's not got one. He's too bad. Saturn? Should we just say we don't know? Yeah. I think we should say... Well, it is, it is people, on. not places. It's people. Pe people have them. People actually have Three them. Three people have them. Right. So, and it's... Is it, give us a clue. Give is us a it, clue, Adam. Like, because... Well, it's the... It's the you guys were on the right track with the nine nine for men, seven yeah. for dwarves, and so, then three for the elves. Three for the elves. And then those three are still around and being used in the third. Oh, those Wait, doesn't three. Galadriel have Galadriel's one? Galadriel's got one. She's got a lovely one. Yeah, she's got a, one of yes, the nicest. A feminine looking one. Now yeah. does what oh. about um the guy from the Matrix? Um, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Jones. Uh, Liv Tyler's dad. Yeah. Uh, Liv Tyler's dad's got uh, it. Uh, uh, does he have one? Yeah, he, 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 what's his name again? King of the Elves? Come on, Dom. Oh, we're in trouble here. Not Eero. Radiga no. Uh, Arwen's dad. What's the King of the Elves called again? <laughs> Elrond, but that's right. I'll give you that one. Okay. Elrond and Galadriel. Galadriel, are two, right. Elrond. And sing me, Legolas' dad. Celeborn, is that his name? What's his name? No. Has Legolas, his dad, got one? No, like, of missed. course he's not. I think we've only got two. I think we have well, to move I on. I think, here. no, one of the elves. One, give us another elf. Uh, uh, but he's a high king. Don't How know. Don't, another hint? We got two. Yeah, give yeah, us another hint. Come I on. Think we've... 
you're All be, right. You're being the, too um, kind. The to third us. person that currently ha- ha- holds this ring mm-hmm. isn't an elf. Isn't an elf. Well, it's. Uh, it's... <laughs> he was with you for half the movie. Yeah, remember. <clears throat> That's true. Scandalf, then, isn't it? No. no. <gasps> he was with half, us for the half, movie, movie. half the movie. Half the movie? Well, Gandalf or was more. only with us for half. Right? I, it, oh, I don't know how the minutes work out. It might be more than half. Ara- Aragorn. <laughs> Is it? Get out. Is it? No, I think we have to move on. Is We've it only Aragorn? got two out of three. Aragorn's got a nice ring. It is Gandalf. It Gandalf. was Goosey Goosey! I said goosey. I think we are, can we get, should we get like half a we point? Half a we got point two out of three. Because we, d- we really, really dug ourselves into the Well, you got two there. out of three, so I think that's two points, right? But that, right. And I did say that was a tricky one, so. It can't be two out of no, three. No, it can be, because I we say only half give you a one. Point, for, we'll we, take half a point for that. Thanks, Adam and, and, and David. But really I tell you half. what, I'm not giving, I was going to give you multiple choice for this one, but I'm not going to anymore. No, these guys are too play, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is the name of Thorin's sword in The Hobbit? His sword, Thorin. Do not give them multiple choice. No. No, don't. Because <laughs> they'll get it. They'll get it. They'll then. definitely get it. And you're on a timer, by the way. Yeah, because we've, we've, we've already been here for half an hour. What is well, the it's name? It's got to be the, the sword they find in the troll cave, right, Dave? <gasps> That's the one. I know both of them. So oh, you can, gosh. You can do this one. Oh, all right. Well. They find um, Glamdring, which Gandalf takes, Sting, which mm-hmm. Bilbo takes, and then Orcrist, which is the one that Thorin keeps for himself. We've made it, we've made it too easy, Tom! Get that, you've got it! You've yeah. got it right John, again! John! You said they weren't experts! They're experts! They're not going to do a subreddit if they're not experts! So, our illustrious producer, John, uh, came up with these questions. Right, give, not them, only a, that, give them a hard one, Dom. Not only that. Dom. No, it's these guys. Oh, got to ask for us. Right, not on. only that, but he also got one of the questions wrong do again. Not, do not tell our listeners. On its nest. John's got wide something open. wrong again. All right. right. Sorry, Adam and David. Give us the next. Come one. on, Come ask on. us a really hard one this time. That, that first one was so easy. <laughs> All right, I've got a question. I think this one's gonna be pretty easy. All uh, right, so I'm gonna let you guys off the hook a little bit. They're patronising us now. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> you're going to get that question anyway. I'm just going to leave with it. Okay. Right, go on. What is the elvish word for friend? Is it Drago? Is it Dago? Is it Melon? Is it Strawberry? You, you know this one, don't you? Don't well, you? Mary does this in the right, books. Yeah, yeah. But in the film, it's it was Frodo. Frodo. Yeah, speak friend. Speak and friend enter. and enter. Yeah. It's definitely not strawberry. No. Is it melon? Yeah. I think it's melon. A hundred percent. Let's let's do it. Do it. Melon. Melon. Well done. We've yeah! done it! <laughs> <laughs> this We're is where, back in the race. This is Don't... where the tide turns. Give them a hard one, Dom. I'm telling you, one. I think I don't know if we have any hard ones. Give there. them a hard one, Tom. Well, I'm, I'll ask him question four. Why do, well, they're very book-based. Why don't you ask them a movie-based one? I still think they're going to get it. Right, go on then. Okay. I'm just going to slightly change the question, but it's still, still the same answer. When is Frodo's birthday? <gasps> we could give you multiple choice if you're struggling. I don't think so, Dom, because I think they know it. I think it. David's got it. They, I, I'm pretty sure they have a party on this day. Yeah. Dave, on the subreddit. <laughs> Dave, Dave nodded with a real sense That's of self-assurance. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, of course you should. Bill, Bill, Frodo. Don't tell him the date. You were gonna have it I story. wasn't going to tell them. When is Frodo's birthday? I might have to give this one to you, David. I've oh. got to say, I oh. don't know the exact date for this one. I know it is the same as Bilbo's. Yes. yes. I do not know the exact <coughs> date. <coughs> David knows it. I can see it in his eyes. They had a joint birthday so that they could, uh, you know, save money on the cake. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't know. He doesn't know! He does not know! This is when we come back. remember Frodo's birthday. Okay, should we give you the multiple choice? And you can guess from that, I think. We'll give him the multiple choice. All right, go on then. Is it? That's a good question. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. Well done, John. Well done, John. All is forgiven. Is it <laughs> September 30th, September 22nd, August 13th, or February 24th? 
Those dates again, September 30th, September 22nd, August 13th, or February 24th. <laughs> what do you think, Adam? They look stumped. They are I want absolutely. to lean towards the September ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. I always lean towards September. I, yeah, it's a good name for an album, actually. Mm-hmm. Leaning towards September. But then there were two September seconds. ones. <laughs> there was, and we'll give you them again. One was the 30th or the 22nd. Yeah, I'm not sure. Good. It's go a 50 50 chance. That'll work. We could go with the 22nd. Let's give that one a try. Is that correct? Answer! You gave them too much, Tom. I'm sorry, but I like them. They're growing on They're me. They're nice people, They're but nonetheless, people. we need to win. Oh, good point. Hello, friends. If someone relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, an aging parent, or even a business partner, you need life insurance. And if you need life insurance, you should go to Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers, all in one place. Why compare? You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save 1300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. So here's how it works if you want to get started. First, head to policygenius.com and within minutes you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. And when you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and the scheduling all for free. Nice. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees, so head to policygenius.com to get started right away. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Go right. on, give us another one. Come on, Adam. So what is it? Is it 2-2? Two, two? Yeah, it's two each. Ish. It's actually one. Let's call it two each. So this is... One and a half each. <laughs> right, half. go. Okay. Do you want to go again, David, or all? I got one more. You go, mate. Give you us a really hard one. These are just way too easy. A re- you, do you want a really hard Well. <laughs> what have you done? Medium now? hard? Yeah, medium yeah. hard. This one. Um, like an EDAM. It's tricky, but you have a 50 50 shot because it's true or false. Oh, oh, yeah. We'll either be right or wrong then. Yeah, good point, Bill. Go on. You could guess one each, maybe. Does it work like that? That's yeah, a good why idea. not? So after the story ends, Mary would go on to earn several other honors in his life, including titles such as Master of Buckland and Mary the Magnificent. Yes. And eventually, both Mary and Pippin are buried alongside Aragorn yes. in Gondor. Correct. Done. Is that, is that, that the is, question? It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yes, true it's true. Oh, it's, it's definitely true. true. It's true. We know That's that to true. be true. Mary the Magnificent. Mary the Magnificent. True. Because of his sterling work during the scouring of the Shire, which you were also fantastic in. Yeah, but I never became Pippin the Magnificent. No. I think you became known as Pippin the Drunk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pippin the Pregnant, which was unusual. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, once I found out in New Zealand that Mary and Pippin were buried alongside Aragorn, I suggested to Billy and Vigo mm-hmm. that maybe the three of us should be buried together. Do you remember? And, and you, I said, yeah. Well, Vigo said, absolutely not. On yeah, I, I, was, I said, yes, but Vigo seemed Vigo, Vigo. very against it. Yeah. Vigo vetoed it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Bills, is it you? It is you. Yes. So. Hard, 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 Bills, hard. Okay, then. Adam and David. As you went to the end of the story, we shall do the same. Lovely. After the War of the Rings, <clears throat> how many children did Sam and Rosie have? I will say again. Numbers go that high. How many children did Sam and Rosie have? Yes, and just as a clue, he was quite virile. Sam. And also they didn't own a television set. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. You've skipped a question, Bills, but we'll get back to that later. No, because I, I thought this was hard. To... Adam, I want to say six. Yeah, it is quite a high number. Did you say sex, you, David, you... <laughs> or six? Just wondering in, in your Australian accent. That is how you have children. It Do you is want, sex. Would you like um, a multiple choice on this? Would you like a multiple choice? Yes. I'll give you four chances here. Was it 13, 6, 8... Or 21? 
Lovely stuff, that Bill's lovely stuff. Well, six was in there, and that was your your first thought. So ah, probably roll with that, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's go with six. Final answer: six, and I have to say, it was thirteen. <laughs> thirteen kids he had. Oh, yes. Oh! We're in the lead. We won. Yes. No. No. This is, no. We haven't won left. yet. Are you sure? A baker's dozen. This is the fun. If we get this question right from Adam and David, we've then won. we have won. You we've better won. make it a difficult one. Right. Hmm. Should I go for my most difficult question? Yeah, why Dude, not? Why oh, not? I think so, yeah. It's only uh, hard if you don't know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I'm I'm going to give you my most difficult question, but I'm going to make this a question that only Dom can answer. <gasps> because he knows you know it. I know it. I know it. Yeah, because I know he knows it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, because the question relates directly to the character of Pippin okay so when Pippin sings for Denethor okay his beautiful uh, haunting song duh, you'll while make me, you'll Denethor's make me cry. chopping down tomatoes I'm welling up right now as well. what's the first line of the song you can have a hint or a multiple choice if you want don't give him it because I know for a fact he has this played every evening before he closes his eyes. Yeah, it's the song that I meditate to. So I know for a fact he's going to get this correct. Just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just seeing your lovely little face here singing it. Um, I think I need a multiple choice. I think I do. Dom! No, I, I, it, because there's so much going on in that scene. It's hard just to concentrate on the lyrics because of your How to concentrate growl. on what I was doing. I know you do that thing where you say, all will fade, fade, <laughs> fade, but that's the end. But it's the start we need. <sighs> give us, a, give us a, a, a multiple choice, David. Right. So, Billy, this is him saying he doesn't remember. This right. is, this is multiple... a disgrace. <laughs> I was very drunk when I made those trilogy of films. Right. Multiple choice. One, mist and shadow, cloud and shade. Mist and shadow. Go on. Two. All that is gold does not glitter. All that is gold. Okay. Three. Home is behind, the world ahead. Home is... Or, oh, you can search far and wide. I have to be extremely transparent with you both here, Adam and David. Nothing is ringing a bell. It's almost as if my brain has been taken out and put on a shelf for a moment. Could you, could you read those again, please, David? <laughs> just, I mean, but, just very quickly. Read them again. Just very I'd quickly. love them again, David, because I, I, I feel like I've become drunk okay. on your words. Mist and shadow, Mist cloud and, and shade. Shadow. That's halfway through the song. All that is gold does not glitter. It's true. Home is behind, the world ahead. <laughs> it's that one. Billy. What? <laughs> you can search far and wide. I think. Have you any idea? Well, it's, <clears throat> it's almost as if there was a, like a, a voice in my mind there. I'm going <clears> to. <throat> the I'm, third I'm, one. I'm going to go for. <clears throat> see. Home is behind, the world ahead. Because I can. Dominic! We haven't done it! You've done it! He's, he's a great <laughs> one. Correct. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Dom. Guys, I plucked that out of nowhere. Fantastic. You, will you please listen to that when you go home? Well, that memory comes back. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Mm. How well he knows my performance. It's incredible to Guys, watch. Guys, what a quiz. So we bested two of the Lord of the Rings experts on the internet there. So I think we should True. invite more experts because we cannot be beaten. Yeah. We enjoyed that, guys. That was fantastic. Thanks that a lot, guys. Fun. Thanks for playing along. If you ever want us back on your Reddit, give us a shout. We loved it. It was great fun on there. The people were cool. We really liked it. Of course. Thank We'd you. We'd love to have you back. Thanks, Definitely. Adam and David. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. Love meeting you. Bye. Right, Bill. It's an amazing quiz. Ooh, it was quite difficult, wasn't it? It was brilliant. Should we get into some voicemails? Let's do it. From what John said, we've got a backlog a ton. Let's do it. 
Oh, emails and real mails. Fast as tigers, slow as snails. Hi, Dom and Billy. This is DJ calling in from Minnesota. Um, and my question relates to something you've talked about before on the podcast, but I don't think you've ever been asked. Uh, so here it goes. Um, who is your favorite Beatle, first of all? So Dom, who's your favorite? Billy, who's your favorite? And which Beatles would you have liked to play Mary and Pippin in the theoretical Lord of the Rings film that was proposed that the Beatles were going to star in in the late 60s? So that's my question. Who is your favorite Beatle? And which Beatle would you like to have played Mary and Pippin? Uh, anyways, thanks so much, and I'm really glad you're doing this podcast. You know, we we could we could actually show the audience here how well we know each other by right. answering the question for each other. Because right. I think I know who your favorite Beatle is and for why, right. and I get the impression that you probably know who mine is and for why. I think maybe I might get yours wrong though, but That's I could okay. have a go. Well, should we try? Right, go. I'm gonna say that your favorite Beatle was George Harrison. And the reason for that was because he went on quite a significant spiritual journey in his life, which you identify with. I think I think you're absolutely right there, yeah, Tom. Nice. And I also feel like he wrote some of the best songs. Oh, well. incredible. Very difficult to choose a Beatles. That's so hard. You know. And it changes every day, doesn't it? Yeah. But if I had to choose yours, I would say uh, John Lennon. Mm. I think because he was the most sort of... He 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 ploughed his own road. He if he believed in something, he went completely to that nth degree. Uh, and I feel like you you like that. It's totally right. That's right. We're very good at each it, other. It's brilliant. John Lennon. Just to touch upon that for a second, because John Lennon has uh, had a lot of flaws to his personality. Things that I'm sure he apologised throughout his life about. But my thing with John was that. Alongside all of those, all of those flaws, he let it all hang out, didn't he? He just yeah. said, "Look, I'm, this I'm a flawed me. character. This is, this is me." Yeah, you know. Yeah. Great question. Great there, question. And uh, just to touch on the Beatles doing the Lord of the Rings, which I oh, think yeah. would have been such a fun movie, um, if they had to play everyone, the four of them had to, you know, populate the whole of Lord of the Rings. Then Merry and Pippin for me would be uh, George and Ringo. I would think. I think that's a good shout. Um, yeah. Can't yep. say any better than good. that. Good. Great. Another voicemail from a human. Hey, guys. So first of all, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you guys are great. And I've never been so excited for a new podcast. So great. just want to thank you guys right off the bat. So my question is, of course, about the trilogy. And um, I had a quick question about casting. So I think most people can agree that Lord of the Rings was perfectly casted. Like everyone fit their role perfectly. So I was wondering kind of how you guys felt going into the movie. Did you read for any other characters? And also, how did you feel with that responsibility to kind of embody those roles? Thanks again, guys. This is what happens a lot in castings, and people don't tend to know about this too much that are outside of the business. But what, what can happen a lot, and certainly what happened for me in Lord of the Rings, is you'll read for a generic role initially, and then they'll start to figure out where they might be able to place you. So for Lord of the Rings, from my side of things, there was a generic Hobbit read, which was Frodo greeting Gandalf at the door and saying, you know, you're late and, you know, it's great to see you again. And they come in and they have the conversation to see if you could be hobbity. And then from then on, they start to think, well, okay, we've, we've got an idea for Frodo, but that person had some Hobbit elements, so maybe they can play this character and this character. Same for me in, which is another example, Lost. There was only, when I went in to uh, see those guys on Lost, there was only two reads. One was a scene with Kate that all the ladies read, and one was a scene with Sawyer that all the guys read. So a lot of people said, oh, you read for Sawyer initially. Not really. Because You're reading, everyone did. Yeah, to right. see if you can fit into the world. Have you had that experience outside of Rings? Um... Yeah, well, the rings thing for me, I read a sort of generic scene as well, I suppose, but it, it was more like what would have been Sam's scene. Right. And looking through the window and all Dropping that. Dropping eaves. Yeah, that sort of thing. It was a scene like that, but they did say it was Pippin at right. the time. Um, 
But other jobs, yeah, there's been where they just want to see you do something. Yeah. And then everybody's so secretive sometimes on jobs. They yeah. Don't want to, they don't want you to actually give you a scene. So they, they make up a, a, a bad scene. Yeah. It's and just, we, we just do a thing as well, don't we? When we watch, sometimes we watch a TV show or something, and somebody really nails a speech and we go, do you think that was the audition? That was the audition. Because I've done more work on that than yeah. anything else in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You can always spot that as an actor, what their audition scene was. It's usually either a monologue or a, or a scene with only one other character and kind of an emotional yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because just to touch upon that, I think, if I remember rightly, Orlando read for Faramir and lots of people were just initially reading for a kind of generic human -y role. Yeah, yeah. And then they thought, oh, Orlando, he looks good. Maybe he's more elven. And then he mm. came in and did that. So I think that answers your question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Kenny from Liverpool. And yes, I am a fan of the six-time European champions, <gasps> Liverpool Football Club. But my question is for Billy. I was just wondering if you are a fan of Bell and Sebastian. I know they're from Scotland, um, like yourself. And I was just wondering whether you have a favourite song or a favourite album and if you've ever played with them um, or any stories like that. Really enjoy the podcast. Stay safe. Bye. Cheers, Thank mate. you. Can you do a Scouse accent? No. Can well, you? I, yeah, I think Scouse accent is <laughs> <What>? quite... <laughs> I think it's quite easy. What I do with a Scouse accent is I just keep a little bit more spit in the back of my throat, yeah. so it just becomes kind of like you like grabbing on the on the spit, you know. That's good. Thanks. Yeah, Bell and Sebastian, you love them. I do. I love Bell and Sebastian. I like um, a lot of Glasgow music. I feel like um, I understand where it comes from, mm. and uh, there's a lot of different sort of genres, obviously. But I think Bell and Sebastian really caught something in uh, in music that no one else really had. Uh, I've never played with them, um, but I do think they're brilliant. And but When you say caught something, you mean off the mics? No, uh, I mean okay, like they, they, their type of music just really feels like a type of Glasgow that I, I really think that they, they, they nailed something in their music that I think is brilliant. I, th I think they're great. But my wife was very upset when she found out that Belle and Sebastian weren't a couple. Yeah. Cause she, she didn't like that. She had asked you years later, so yeah. is that Belle singing? Is that or Belle is or Sebastian? I'm like, no, I think that's from a French cartoon or something. <laughs> the boy with the Arab strap, I remember Brilliant. us having on heavy rotation in New Zealand. Great stuff. Great. And years later, we did a, I did a, um, a sitcom in Glasgow called Empty, and I really pushed for Bill and Sebastian to to be the the theme song for it. I can't even remember what song I was talking about then, uh, but uh, we went a different way, and I was I was kind of upset because I felt like that really this says Glasgow and it's it was quirky and I, I, I really I, yeah I love Bill and Sebastian. Great uh, question there from Scouser. Oh, William, thank oh, that is that it for voicemails? That's it for voicemails. But now we have questions. Now, here's another question from Matt W. He wanted to stay uh, slightly anonymous. In New Jersey, he said, Hi, guys, love the podcast and what you're doing with it. Thanks. With the pandemic, what is the quarantine habit that you are most proud of to have got into? Or what quarantine habit surprised you the most? When I'm not under quarantine and there's no pandemic, I like going to like a gym. You know, lifting some weights. Pumping or, it up. Yeah, doing a class or something. And I found myself working out at home, and I've quite enjoyed that. Mm, I don't mm. even know if I'll go back to a gym now. Same. I quite like stretching my legs there, maybe lift a couple of things. You've got a bike, haven't you? Got a Peloton bike. I'll go hell for leather on that thing. Really? Sweat pouring off me, Dom. Yeah. Sometimes I make noise. Ah! Ah! How's but the knees, by the way? Knees are having... bikes are very good for knees. Yeah, yeah, that will keep them lubricated. And you've you've been uh, instructed by your doctor to to pump your ass up. Not... My, I've got I've got to use my like my butt more when I walk upstairs. Squats, squats are good. Squats, squats are very good, Dom. Lunges, side lunges, just keeping myself moving, keeping active. 
Can I make a suggestion? Carry on. Have your wife make you a really, really tasty cheese sandwich, mm-hmm. and then when you, when you go for it, mm-hmm. have a step, take a couple of steps back, and you you oh, will God. inadvertently lunge and then step back, and then lunge, lunge and then back. step back. Have her do that most evenings, and you you watch the difference in your ass. What's your favourite cheese? You've only got three seconds to answer. Cabanzola. Well done. It's a German cheese behaving like an Italian blue. Oh, wait, what was the question? Oh, for me. Well, I'm a big I'm a big gardener. I do like to garden. And in the last year, my gardening went to a different level, which was, you know, I had, this is the first time ever in my entire life that I spent a year and a half in my house in LA. So I was able to plan things in my garden that might take six months or nine months to grow instead of trying to get things to grow overnight because I might be, Leaving my house to go. You, you got to work. give it time. Okay, so you know what I mean. The garden project that I did on my hill was pretty fantastic. What quarantine habit surprised you the most? Um, I mean, the fact that we're still playing League of Legends is quite surprising. It's that been, is surprising. I didn't think I would play. It's been a solid year of playing, and we we're still, still absolute trash. And we don't have Elijah on the team yet. No. Right. Next question. Hang on. This is from Angelica, Angelica J. J. And she says, "Hey, Dom and Billy." My name is Angel, and I live in the beautiful northern part of Michigan. Personal question for the both of you. What brings you the most peace or makes you the happiest? Is it a place, a song, a person? And she thanks us for our answers. Uh, that, even, Angel. Even that question made me feel quite peaceful. It's quite nice, isn't it? What, if you had to, what do people say Michigan or Michigan? I think Michigan, yeah. Detroit. Michigan. What? Most people would say, what shape is Michigan? Do, Do you know? know? No. Most people say a hand. So when anyone talks about where they come from in Michigan, they say, oh, I'm near the pinky, or I'm right here uh, uh, near the wedding ring. Right. Is it, it's like the palm of a hand. Yeah. Right, okay. So there you go. Right. There's a piece of information for you, Tom. Lovely, Bills. Uh, what brings you the most peace? Well, I mean, I just answered a question about my garden. Being in my garden for a couple of hours, looking at my my phone and realizing that two hours went by just pottering around in my garden has yeah. been amazing. I'm on this 21-day specific meditation right now, mm-hmm. which is, and this is going to f- sound a little flowery and strange to some people. Not and at all. Who knows if it works or who knows if it doesn't, but this is a chakra meditation. Lovely. So it's 21 days, three days working on each specific chakra. Nice. And I had a meditation the day before yesterday, which is always my favorite type of meditation. I'm not sure if if you've had this. I'm sure you have. Where you have this kind of almost like gyroscope moving kind of uh, sensation. So I'm sat for kind of 15 minutes meditating and suddenly I have the sensation that I'm spinning in space, upside down, anti-clockwise, clockwise, round and about whilst also meditating. Have you had that sensation? Yeah, I think I probably have. Mm. Quite nice, eh? Very nice, but what's what's really intriguing about it is, if for me at least, if I get interested or like, oh, this is really fun, it disappears. Yeah. So I have to find myself saying, I accept this, this is great, and not get too impressed about it. I think that's very good, Tom. What about you? Um, like you, but in a, in a kind of different way, but... Like in a garden or a park, putting things into perspective, I think, brings me the most peace. Mm-hmm. So looking at, you know, a bird flying past and then looking down and there's 400 ants and there's a bee and and I just think, God, you're actually such a small part of everything that's going on. Yeah, That brings me happiness and peace when I feel like just when you feel unimportant. Mm. That's my. That's what. Insignificant. Yeah. Yeah. I but, find that. But good. in balance with everything. Yeah. Just looking and just thinking, you know, look at all those ants and uh, what, they don't even know I exist. Yeah. And then it's a big sky up there and the size of the universe. Yeah. I like that. I say that to people a lot when people ask me questions on, on social media about concerns about a spider in their bathroom or, or, or a wasp nest near their back door or something, I always say to them, the first thing to keep in mind is 
this animal has no concept of you whatsoever. Yeah. Does not yeah. know that you're there, does not know that you're there to bother it, is not out to get you. Mm -hmm. And that's a little perspective thing, right? Yeah. And I think I said to you a few weeks ago, this is something that I've, I've been interested to kind of explore. <laughs> One of my favorite feelings now in my brain, sounds so silly, but it's true, is doing something and just realizing what I'm going to do next. <laughs> Did I tell you that? No. So I'll, I'll be gardening, whatever, and I'll think, okay, got about 20 minutes left of gardening here. So I'll kind of grab, grab the shovel and the trowel and start to tidy up, get my gardening gloves. And as I'm doing that, the last little bit of pottering, I think, hmm, okay, what should I do next? And I think, I'll cook lunch or I'll, I'll watch Netflix or something like that. That feeling of doing something and knowing what is next in the agenda is one of my favorite feelings of tranquility. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's right. good. Oh, and we've also got some Apple reviews here. Do you want to read this one, Bill? Yeah, here we go. Emmy's Mama. Ah. Oh. Emmy's Mama says, I especially loved the conversation with Elijah about parenting, especially parenting <laughs> in a pandemic. Excuse me. Because with an eight-month-old my, eight myself, it was refreshing to hear authentic thoughts. I've never, ever heard a podcast before this one, and I'm glad I chose this one to be the first. Emmy's mama. Emmy's Thanks. eight months old. Thanks, Emmy's mama. You know, I've noticed a lot of people have got in touch with me saying, this is the first time that I've actually subscribed and started to consistently listen to podcasts because of That's the podcast brilliant. that you do with Bills. So welcome to the podcast world, guys. Uh, be sure to leave a review for us, obviously. Take a screen grab before you submit and tag us at The Friendship Onion, and maybe you'll feature on our stories. Billy and Dom eat the world. Billy, do you know what time it is? It's what, Dominic? It's time for Billy and Dom eat the world! My favourite part of the day! My favourite part of the day too. It's exciting today, Dom. Now, Look. John, our illustrious producer, is bringing in a beverage for us. Hiya, John. Hiya, John. Hi. You look very beautiful today. Thank you so much. I'm wearing all grey. I love it. John's wearing all grey. He's brought, he's brought us a pint glass each and, and some a, oat milk. And a knife. <clears> and <throat> normal milk, cow milk. And what we're featuring today oh. is Rhode Island coffee syrup. John is now exiting the room, but he's going to talk us through what we do here. This is... I'll read this out to you guys. All right, go on. In Rhode Island, you can find this in a convenience or a grocery store, much like chocolate milk. But to enjoy it elsewhere in the country, you need to order the secret ingredients, coffee, syrup, and whole milk to mix it yourself. So this is kind of like a, a chocolate milk thing, but it's got a coffee taste. So hold on. I wonder if it's If caffeinated. I can get this right here, John. So in Rhode Island, you can buy this ready-made, but only in Rhode Island. Is is there a company that makes it, or do do like stores make it? Autocrat. Autocrat is the premier brand of coffee syrup, which you use to make coffee milk. But can you buy it actually <sighs> as coffee milk in Rhode Island? I believe so. Yeah. Some or if you now, went... like if you go to coffee shops that they have it like pre-made, like you would find mochas or something out here. Ah, okay. So you go to a, like a corner store and the guys made it in the store. Right. You don't buy it in a bottle pre-made. Oh, you can buy it. I think it's like it's at you know it's it's uh you know almost like a blue bottle coffee you know where you can like buy pre-made mm. with all the ingredients right. mixed in. I believe that's out there. Or you just buy the syrup. Or you just get it made at a coffee shop. I'll tell you how you make it. Thank you, John. You need uh, just one thing. Yep. Two tablespoons into one cup of milk is the ratio. Now, you've made that slightly difficult for us because rather than giving us a tablespoon, John, you've given us a knife. Two knives. So two tablespoons, two I think, is probably 13 knives. Well, it depends the full length of the knife or just from the serrated I'm edge. just going to give it a couple of big squirts. Yeah, give it a good squirt. There's one. That's, There's two. There you go. You've done well I'll there, I'll pass Dom. that over to you, right. William. To me. Seated to my left. Oh, give it a smell. It's heavier than you would think, isn't it? Yeah, it is heavy. I don't think there's any caffeine in the coffee syrup. Are you sure? And I wouldn't necessarily describe it as a... <clears throat> I'm going to call that one... Healthy dish. Hold on. Can well, you hear this, Dom? Dish. What is it? You can't hear a thing. It's completely silent. <clears throat> I am now pouring oat milk into this uh, 
glass vessel. I am oh. pouring uh, cow's milk. Lovely, uh, lovely hue. That's not the name of our new producer, lovely hue. I mean the colour. Um, well, it's coffee coloured, isn't it, really? Yeah. One cup of cool. Oh, right, okay. Give that a stir. Oh, if it were me, I would add a little ice cube. Well. Because I like an icy coffee. Well, you can't have everything. <clears throat> Should we read a little bit more about this stuff? So, obviously, very popular in Rhode Island. First introduced to Rhode Islanders in the early 1920s, coffee milk became so popular, it was designated the official state drink of Rhode Island in 1993. Now, Dominic, yeah, mysterious on. as it may be to outsiders, coffee milk is a pretty obvious leap for anyone who's had a glass of strawberry or chocolate milk. It's a sugary syrup commonly made from instant coffee mixed with sugar and corn syrup. It's bottled and added. A few spoonfuls at a time to a glass of milk, then stirred and enjoyed. It says here, which is quite concerning, originally marketed at children. Oh, yes. Coffee drink for children as a way to get them to drink their milk and also coffee. Today, the syrup is a favourite of both young and old and transplanted Rhode Islanders take to the web to keep their kitchen stuck. Oh, you can only get it from oh. so, the worldwide internet. To Should everyone we... in, in Rhode Island. Cheers. Cheers. Chin, chin. All the best. Right. Make sure you masticate. Mastication is very important. Oh. Well, that is an absolute delight. And I tell you something, Dom. I tell you what would make that even better right now. If you get this, first guess what I would put in there to make that better. Something you would put in the coffee drink to mm -hmm. make it better. Another flavour. Mm. Oh, I can almost taste it in it. Another flavour. Yeah. Is it... Is it honey? I went down the wrong way there, like a Malteser. Hey. Was it honey? Because it's no. very sweet. It's very sweet, but you know what I'd put in? And it would sweeten it even more. You ready, Dom? Go on. Oh, Nutella! No, oh, not Nutella. I got excited, I'm sorry. That was a good guess. Marmite! No! No, go on. Condensed milk. Oh, my God. Uh, could you imagine it with condensed milk? Yeah, it would be nice with Close your milk. eyes. Hang on, let me imagine it with And then have a sip of it. Just sip it through your lips and think of condensed milk. Oh, yeah. It would be so sweet. It it's already be. sweet. And you know how if you have something really sweet, your, your bum hole gets itchy? Yeah, it does. What yeah. is that? I don't know what that is, but if I eat too much sweets, or as they're known in the United States, candy... The whole yeah. of my posterior gets itchy, itchy. If there's to any the extent where sometimes I might have to just, um, you, <laughs> cr let's say, create some space. And if anyone knows why my bum hole might get itchy after sweets, maybe a medical student out there or, or a fully fledged doctor. Yeah, yeah. Could you please write in or leave a, a voicemail and tell us why his bumhole would get itchy after sweets. <laughs> hey, there's a few things that happen with me with like apples make my cheeks sweat. True story. If I give eat us an another apple, one. If I eat, well, salt and, some salt and vinegar crisps make my make my cheeks sweat. Um I think that's it. That's not bad that. Um I'm going to have another drink of this. Can we can we read out the ingredients of the yeah. coffee syrup because I wouldn't describe it as a healthy dish. Well, let me just tell you what's in it, Tom. Beverage. And as you know, and uh, for all the listeners, whenever you yeah. read out um, or you're having a read at the ingredients of anything, the first thing is the thing that's mainly in it. Yeah. And then slowly, as the percentages go down, you go down the list. Right, which is why in Britain they had to stop calling um, steak and kidney pies steak and kidney pies because there was much more kidney than there was steak. So do they call it kidney and steak pie now? I think they do, but on That's the down low, weird. people call them steak and kidney pie. Ingredients. Give me the first one, Dom. You'll get it, right? Uh, high fructose corn syrup. On the nose. I've nailed it. Second. Corn syrup. They need double the corn syrup. Yeah, but one part of it is not high fructose. I don't know why you would need double corn syrup. I mean, that is sweet, isn't it? Sweet. Then you've got coffee extract, caramel colour, potassium sorbate, and it's got sulfites. 
I mean, nothing in that is healthy. But it's tasty. I like the taste of it, Dom, and it's quite Moorish for me. Well, should and give you're some right, scores? It, it should be colder. It should be colder. There should have been some ice in there, but we can't catch a break with John. He's treating us like pigs. Yeah, honestly, it's as if he doesn't care. Um, should we give it some scores? Yeah, please. It's crazy. I always forget the categories. Taste. Taste. Aesthetics. How looks. it looks. And how useful is it? Okay. First, taste. Out of 10, you can have points in there. I'm giving it a... I'm giving it a three. Oh, a three out of that's, that's your just, It's not done a lot it's for not, me. It's not his thing. It's not your no, thing. A big glass of milk with some sugary coffee, but there's no caffeine in the coffee? Why? Why? There's no caffeine in it? No, there's no caffeine. Oh, that's, that's, so why that's a problem. So why would you drink it? Wait a minute, John's about to say something. No. Nope. I think he's just... Uh, he just moved I'm there. just making sure that... I think there is caffeine in Oh, it. hold on. That could change the usefulness. Yeah, that could. So you, you keep oh, looking at that. It says slightly caffeinated syrup. While I do this, hold on. I'm going to say for taste, because I quite like the taste, but I know what you mean. It's a little bit... Oh, that's a bit sweet for me. Very now. sweet. I'm going to give it a six. There you are, Tom. I tell Bang you, on a who six. would like this is what? my father because he has a sweet tooth. Mm-hmm. He loves condensed milk and there's a bit of a condensed milk vibe to mm. that. And he likes a coffee, so I think my dad would like that. Do you know what I'd like to do with your dad one day? Go on. Just sit down in front of TV, maybe with a football on or yeah, something, yeah. and we'll just share a big tin of condensed milk. Two spoons. <laughs> we'll just take the top off and we'll just sit there. I'd love that, my dad. I would love that. He would love that. Um, okay. Oh, As- hold on, John. Oh. John. So it has 95 milligrams of caffeine, which is about, uh, you'd need to drink seven cups of coffee to have, or sorry, you'd need to drink seven cups of coffee milk to get the same as one cup of coffee. Oh, no. It's not enough caffeine. So it has a seventh of the normal amount of coffee of a normal cup of coffee. So imagine, if you will, a cup of coffee was... All the dwarfs and Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah. This would just be sleepy. Right. Right, got it. So aesthetics. Can we just hold up the bottle? I quite like the look of the bottle, actually. Like a dark, not quite, well, it is black. It's a what black a weight's yeah, in it. Just, Why is it so heavy? Yeah, it's quite viscous. Right, what are you thinking, Dom? From an aesthetics point of view, I like the yellow and the, and the red and the black. Why little... does it get a chicken? I'm not sure why it's got a chicken on it. Is it because it wakes up early in the morning? I'm going to give the aesthetics a 7.8. Very good, John, yeah, because like when it. I look at that, it doesn't do much for me. I don't like the chicken. I'm giving it a three. Oh, this is going to be the lowest score up to now. And then usefulness. I mean... What would you put it in if you didn't put it in milk, some sort of milk? I'm guessing maybe the people of Rhode Island have created some sort of puddings or desserts with it like a coffee flavored cake or a you know like maybe a tiramisu with a little bit of that in there but it's not very flexible is it it's kind of drink coffee syrup and that's it hold on dom yeah go on i've just looked there it's not just autocrat who makes this like take for instance dave's coffee who won the 2013 yankee magazine editor's choose choice food awards they have their own which is all natural syllabs. 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 So it's obviously some alcohol in that. <laughs> and they have it in original vanilla and mocha flavours. And there's no artificial colours, sweeteners, or high fructose corn syrup in there. What do you think of that? Well, I think we should have had Dave's coffee syrup. Why didn't we have of Dave's? The autocrat one. Come they on, tried, why didn't we try both of them? John's trying to poison us. Um, so in terms of, what is it? Flexibility? No. I, uh, how useful is how it? How useful is it? I'm giving that a one. <laughs> you give it a one? Well, it's not useful, is it? Well, you're about, a one almost feels like you can't even drink it. Give me, tell me something else you can do apart from make coffee milk with that. You know what you could put? Put that on top of some nice vanilla ice cream yeah. and you'll be good to go. And 
You could also put it. Wait a minute, John's got an idea. I'm saying just uh, scroll down a bit. There's one more. Scroll down a bit there, Tom, and, I'll, and you can tell us exactly. Look, look at that. Well, it says here, do you want your coffee, milk, cold and creamy? Just add some vanilla ice cream and blend the whole thing together into a coffee cabinet. That's a frappe to other New Englanders and a milkshake to those that are really from away. Well, that doesn't make any sense, really from away. John, you've, you've scuppered us again. You know I'll read anything off a computer screen. He's made me read a nonsensical sentence. Milkshake to those that are really, really from, from away. away. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, they're saying that you can add vanilla milkshake to it to make it into a kind of ice cream drink, but it's still not very flexible. flexible. You're probably right. I'll give it a four. Sorry, Rhode Islanders. It's, it's not our favourite, but I'm, I still drunk the whole thing. I didn't. I only drank half. I found it very sickly. We're moving on. <laughs> Right, Dom, before we finish, yeah. someone sent in a, a lovely tune for Is It Funky? funky and this thing. is from Larissa Marcotti. Would you say Marcotti? Yeah, or Marcotti, Mar- I think. Why not? Larissa Marcotti from Loveland, Ooh. California. Ooh. And this is the Whaling Jenny's Long Time Traveller. Right, let's have a listen. Listen to this. <laughs> Charms of earth, farewell your springs of joy, your joy. My soul now seeks another home, a brighter world on life. I mean, is it funky? I think we should get to that in a second, because I think there's a very clear answer as to whether it's funky or not, but it was quite haunting and beautiful. Well, isn't it absolutely it? lovely? It could almost fit in Middle Earth. You could imagine maybe yeah. some lovely ladies from Gondor or Rohan singing that on a mountaintop type yeah. thing. Or Merry and Pippin hiding somewhere in the shower as, as the elves walk past singing that. But is it funky? I don't think it's funky, Tom. No. But it was brilliant. No, it reminded me of the Scottish guy who did a thing on TikTok where he sang like a a sea shanty. And then he asked, he didn't even ask people, but everybody joined in. And people did bass harmonies. Oh, I remember that. Come with me. And and I see you in a bop. And and I love the sound of human voices mixing together. I like that too. But on a scale of Brahms, no funk to Prince... Funkadelic. Uh huh. What are you going to score it? I mean, to be honest, we have to put it there in the way of a, you know, maybe some sort of choir. Is it Alad Jones? Well, you could put it there as an Alad Jones. Well, the Saint Winifred School Choir. I went to Saint Winifred's when I was a kid. No, you didn't. I did. I went to school at Saint Winifred's. You did my, not. I absolutely did. In fact, my cousins sang in the choir that did Grandma. We love you. They were on top of the pops. They were as they well. They were on top of the pops. You went to that school? I went to St. Winifred's RC Primary School. You should have told me on that On Didsbury before, Road. Sister Aquinas and Sister Margarita. Um, ah, I'm going to say, on a scale of Brahms to Prince, I'm going to say Schubert. Not to be confused <laughs> with Sherbert. Oh. It was not funky, but it was wonderful. I'm going to go home and uh, get hold of that. I'm going to look up the Wheel and Jennies because that was brilliant. That's it. We're done with the show. Do you know what? We've gone way over again because there's way too much of you and me, but we just can't stop, can we? We can't stop talking. And then when people send us things, we want to talk about it. I enjoyed it. Guys, it's been fantastic. M- make sure you get in touch with us. Cast. No, the friendship on your net. Castmedia.com. That's cast with a kicking K. And you can also leave a voicemail, of course. But where would you leave that, Tom? Well, it's somewhere around here. www.speakpipe forward slash The Friendship Onion. I've ruined it. I've no, ruined it you've done good. It's, it's www.speakpipe.com forward slash The Friendship Onion. Nice one. And there's obviously The Friendship Onion on Instagram. There's The Friendship Onion on YouTube. 
Leave us all your comments. Let us know what you want us to do. Get in touch if you've got food or beverages that you want us to eat. Songs that you want to ask if they're funky or not. Leave messages. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please, guys. Please. We want to remain at number one. Don't forget to rate and review. Very important. And when you do review, take a screenshot. Tag us in it. We'll stick it on Instagram or we'll read it out here. We'll see you next week. I love that. Toodles. Thank you.